Hey, what's up, peeps? Caught me scratching my shoulder. Oh, well. Exciting stuff. Anyways, welcome back to Nikki T Live. Uh, just uh, doing a couple things today. Uh, I'm off today. I was doing some errands and uh, got some stuff fixed. Like there was a couple shady light bulbs going on in the house. Got those sorted out and uh, took some stuff to uh, the frippery, which is uh, like a Salvation Army here. <clears throat> anyways and got some groceries but uh yeah i'm uh i got a couple things just gonna be unboxing and uh hey how's it going bjorn hey how's it going charles good to see you, my man yeah so uh yeah like i was saying uh yeah day off today but um just uh doing a few things that i've been trying to get sorted out um and yeah i got a couple things to unbox as well uh I don't typically do unboxing videos, but people sent me stuff, so uh, might as well. Um, I, I already put a picture of it on uh, on Twitter, but uh, thanks again, Cloudinary, for sending my swag bag for uh, being an ambassador. Uh, this coffee mug's pretty dope. Uh, dishwasher safe as well. Coffee's still hot. Not going to burn my tongue. Yeah, it's good to see you too, my man. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Uh, I guess we can start off. So somebody sent me. I got to switch so I can actually see what I'm showing to make sure I can show properly. So uh, this company, I don't know if it's Fifine or Fifine. Uh, they sent me this. Uh, it's a gaming slash uh, streaming microphone. And I currently have this one here, which is a Blue Yeti. And it's been working fine, but uh, they said, you know, like, do you want to try this other one out? So I'm going to, I don't know if I'll hook it up right now, just because like I'm midstream, but uh, I have to see how it's connected and stuff. So also just nice packaging. All right. And let's open up this sucker. All right in there i don't i'm not set up right now to have like two cameras or anything but um but yeah let's pull it out here and so it's got a stand i'm just going to tighten it here but it's a nice little guy here it's got a stand but uh also um you can unscrew it let me just do this here like that and then I can hook it up onto here, which I'm just trying to see what kind of uh, USB connection it is. Is it you? Okay, it's like the one I currently have. All right. Um, we could <laughs> we could try this. I guess. Uh, yeah. I guess whatever standard. I guess that's three quarter inch screw. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if we can do a test here. Uh. Hopefully I don't mess up my audio, but this is the current microphone and um, I could try, let me try hooking this in. Hold on a sec. I just want to make sure it is the same. Okay. No, it's not the same. So this is USB-C, which I do have. Um, hold on a sec here. All right. Let's plug that in. Yeah, I think... I don't think I'll, <laughs> it, yeah, it should be plug and play, yeah. So like if I just tighten this, like, I also like that it has this screen here on here. Uh, I forget what you call those things. I'm not an audiophile, so I bought this like styrofoam thing to cover this one. Um, but it has all the knobs here. So like, uh, we've got, let me unplug it for a sec. Uh, we got gaming and chat there. Um, I would probably put it to chat because I don't really game. Um, there's microphone volume on here. There's also a headphone volume. And if you look at the bottom, let me move this here. So you can plug in your uh, headphones and what else is on there? Let me read it. Uh, da, da, da. I'd have to read the instructions, but... Um, I think they're two different sound modes. I know they have like the, um, what's it called? Cart, cartoid? Yeah, pop covers, thank you. Um, is it cartoid mode? I forget what it is, but there's different modes of it. 
Um, and and to be clear, uh, I'm not expecting this microphone to be like a sure microphone. Like I know, like Chan Tastic, for example, has like an amazing microphone. He swears by the sure stuff. I might get like a super expensive mic like that at some point, but I just gonna see like like the uh, the Blue Yeti's been doing well for me. But I want to try this one out and just see if it performs better. Uh, I was kind of doing errands, like I said. So I think what I'll do is I'll get them both set up for like another stream. And then I'll see if the audience can help me compare. Like I'll, I'll do a recording too so I can listen to myself. But just curious what... Uh... <laughs> just getting a sure isn't just a mic. It's getting a lifestyle. Okay. That's a lot of pressure. I don't know if I'm ready for big life changes, but... All right, <laughs> cool. Um, all right, let me just put this back in the box. I am excited to try it out, though. And also, thank you. Uh, I, I honestly don't know how you pronounce the company. It's either Fifine or Fifine. Um, so let's just get this back in here. Okay, there. Uh, other side. Cool. I am excited to try it out though. And it looks pretty cool. Um, all right, let's move on to number two, I guess. So this one here is care of app, right? Um, so I spoke at one of their launch releases in, I think it was February. Uh, I can't remember. I, I was I used to work on the uh, frameworks team at Netlify, and so like we were talking about the different JavaScript runtimes and just all the exciting stuff happening in that. Yeah, yeah, exciting keyboard. So I'm gonna open this up, and I'm definitely not an unboxing pro. Somebody in the chat's probably gonna say, "Okay, boomer, having trouble uh, opening that." So I'm just gonna use a pen knife to just slice open the plastic packaging. I've heard really good things about these. So, and I saw my buddy Jason Torres actually got a white one and he was, he was unboxing it earlier today, I think. So let me just get this open. Just gotta put this stuff in the recycling beside me here. I do like the aesthetic of the box. So there, it should be less shiny now. So there we go. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what it is in a second, I guess, because I, I honestly don't know. Well, it is called the App Writer, uh, obviously, because App Write. Um, so let's take a peek here. I should be really set up with a cooler setup to, so I have like my another old phone just pointing at my desk or something. But all right, I'm letting this box slide open. It's got like Apple feels when you do that. Okay. All right. Phase one, cool. So it's got USB, so USB A to USB C that, so I can hardwire this bad boy. And it says this keyboard is compatible with both Mac and PC. All right, let's take a peek in here. Oh, it's chonky, it feels good. All right, uh, what's this here? Oh, okay, oh, I've never, uh, there's a, there's like tongs to fix the keys if I need to, I guess, or clean them. So let's take this out. All right. It's got a good weight to it. There we go. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, Violet? It's like not compatible with line Linux. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it is. Okay, so they got... Actually, it's pretty nice on the back. So here... There's on the back and there's a USB dongle so I could make it wireless. And there's the on off, there's some switches here. Not switches, but the feet. So I'm gonna plug this in and let's see. Um, I will preface this with, I'm probably gonna lose this keyboard to one of my kids, but uh, thank you AppRight for uh, supporting my kids. I, uh, I don't know if it's a rebranded Keychron to be honest. Uh, I could ask the AppRite folks, but unless you can tell, Charles, like here, take a peek. Does that look like a Keychron? I'm not a I'm not a keyboard junkie, so like I might have to send it the way of uh, Cassidy Williams and ask her. 
All right, let's uh, get this plugged in here. So you can plug in the USB-C in the back here. I'm gonna do that for now, but there is the dongle, like I said. So let's do that. And do, 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 do. also realizing I'm just looking under my where my keyboard was and there's like, it's not a disaster, but there's like a uh, bit of shrapnel. All right, okay. Let's get that in. All right, I got a slot on my uh, USB hub here. All right. I th oh, cool. Check that shit lighting up. Wow. I should do it again because it went rainbow to start off with. So here, let's do this again. Let me loosen the wire. That's a little tangled at the moment. Okay. One more time. Okay, there. Okay, it should light up rainbow style. There we go. Pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, now let's see, is it... Okay, I think I might have to connect it to my computer. Somehow. It's plugged in, it's wired to my computer, but uh, I think I have to allow the USB to accept it. Uh, just seeing what this is on the back. I'm not sure what that switch is. Let me see. Uh, B, S. I'll have to figure out what... There's a switch that has like three toggles in the back. So I'm going to have to see what that is. Uh, let me go back to OBS here. Yeah, it is nice. Um, uh, I have to figure... I, I think I might have to wire it right into my computer. I'll have to see about that. Um, let's see here. I mean, it is powered up. Uh, it's just because I have this hub and I feel like my computer is not picking it up right now. It could be I have too many things. But anyways, just want to give it another show. Thank you so much, AppRite. Uh it's yeah it's uh it's low profile for chonky keys i would say like because like growing uh having a computer in the 80s like the keys were like really chonky this feels more low profile yeah uh, but it is a uh, beautiful yeah I'll, I'll i'll show it one more time here uh this way there we go yeah and the smart app right to uh put their logo in the corner there for the escape key um but yeah, no, thanks so much, AppRite. Cool stuff. All right. I'm just going to move this for now because uh, I know I, I, I've had this happen before where like my computer, it pops up. Do you want to allow this USB device to connect? And I'm not getting that prompt right now. So I have a feeling I might have to do it straight into my computer, but I don't want to mess up the stream right now. But just want to say thanks. Uh, thanks for all those things. Appreciate it. I'm going to put this to the side for now. And and I guarantee I am definitely losing this keyboard to my kid. <laughs> or one of my kids. I'm not sure how that's going to play. I'm I think my youngest will get it because uh my my older one. Oh, and it comes with some spare keys. Uh I didn't open it, but there's spare keys in there. So that's pretty sweet. Um let's pop that in there. Cool. All right, pop that there. Also, I see violated signs in the chat. Uh, thanks again for hanging out yesterday on the stream. Lots of fun. If, uh, if folks in the chat aren't already following uh, violated sign, go give them a follow on Twitter and, and Twitch, I guess, too. All right, let me put that over there. Cool, cool, cool. All right, where's my mouse? Okay. Let's head back over to, let's go to see what's going on over here. All right, cool. Oh uh, yes, the good old periodic table of HTML elements. Okay, you got one? Hey, how's it going, Codeability? EJ, so good to see you, man. Uh, quick check, uh, I just wanna, do, uh, I have the clo uh, the the live captioning going. Do, are are you able to see it, EJ? Just out of curiosity, I I usually check before the stream. I forgot to today. Um, 
EJ's uh, 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 codeability there is an old coworker of mine. Uh, awesome person. Hmm, let's see. Let's go to Twitch and see if it's actually... Let me go to... Uh, it might... I can't... I I push out the live captions for all of them. Um, oh yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, if you're on Twitch, uh, oh CC off. Yeah, so the closed captioning definitely works on Twitch because I I push it out from my own computer. I'm not sure how uh, LinkedIn or YouTube or Twitter process it if they do. I could actually take a. I'm on Twitter right now here, so let's just take a peek. Um, Okay, there is closed captioning, so let me turn down the volume on Twitter. And I just, this is more just out of curiosity. This is going to look weird, I know, for a sec, but uh, let's play it. And okay, so, okay, they are getting my my live captioning. That's cool. Okay, cool. Good on you, Twitter. Awesome. Cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, I know... I know for Twitch at least you can uh, actually let me pause this because I'm getting inception happening. Uh, I know for Twitch, well, most of them they usually have the little CC icon in the player, but uh, yeah, I'm not. It would be kind of ironic if it was inaccessible to enable that. <laughs> but <laughs> anyways, sorry, not funny, funny, but just like kind of like you know, funny in the sense like, oh, how could you? You, you create an accessible feature, but uh, you can't actually enable it unless you do something in an inaccessible way. Anyways, I digress. I digress. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for hanging, uh, EJ. Great to see you. Um, yeah, like I was saying, EJ uh, used to work with me at Netlify. Uh, we also were um, mentors at uh, the Collab Lab, which is a, it's a great program for like people looking to get in the industry. Uh, Unfortunately, it's closing down, uh, which is sad, but uh, it was a really good run. Uh, big shout out to Andrew and Stacy who started that. Um, had a good run. Uh, and thanks to all the volunteers there, including you, EJ. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, I did forget to mention real quick here. Uh, let me find it. Let me switch over here for a second. Yeah, so uh, where is it? Okay, yeah. Uh, just a quick shout out to, uh, digital ocean. Uh, they're sponsoring the stream until July 9th. So, um, and they've got an event going on a, a virtual conference for developers, startups, and founders. It's called, uh, uh, deploy 24, uh, feel free to check it out. I'm going to drop a link in Twitch and all the other places. For some reason it, it breaks up the UTM. Oh, uh, YouTube does the UTM fine. For some reason on Twitch, it doesn't. It like cuts it off and I'm going to see if I can fix that, but, uh, okay, wait, oh, that might do it. Actually. Let me try that again. Uh, but up, up, uh, let's paste that. I think that worked. Okay. Yeah, it did work. Okay, cool. It was just cut off, I guess. All right, cool. Let's get back to all the chats. Um, yeah, so, uh, I'm going to get off this screen so we don't see the same thing over and over and let's switch back to pairing view We can close that. So I've been looking a bit into, um, Swift. I, I like literally just started looking into it. Um, and let's just go to here. Let's open this up big, uh, Swift language. So I don't know about anybody else, but um, I feel kind of silly, but I assume that uh, Swift was Swift UI. So like I literally thought it was just for building UIs if you're building, excuse me, a mobile app in, in for iOS. Uh, but of course it's not, it's, I mean, Swift UI uses Swift, but Swift itself is its own language. And again, I feel silly for, for not knowing that or making that distinction, but um, it seems pretty cool. Like, uh, I started one of the, the, the tutorials the other day. So like, there's a bunch of things in here, like there's all the references in here and stuff, but I, I worked on, um, what was it? 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't. I don't feel so silly then, uh, EJ. Thanks. Uh, that makes me feel a little better. <laughs> M maybe it's just the perception of people that aren't necessarily working in that ecosystem. I guess that's because yeah. I I literally thought there was just Swift UI, because um, that's all I've ever heard people talk about. Um, but anyways, it's it's got all kinds of stuff. You can actually do backend with it. You can write CLIs with it. You can, it's cross platform, so it works on Windows. Like, you can actually build programs to work on Windows, uh, Mac OS, and Linux. Um, it's in, uh, they have a, a language uh, service, so it, you, they, you have a, it available in VS Code. You can obviously use Xcode if you're on a Mac, but um, I had started looking at it with uh, VS Code just to see how how decent it is and it's it's pretty good uh, I'm gonna open it up uh, let's see here uh, just one sec I gotta check something uh, okay hold on a sec That is okay. Cool. Let me close that. All right. Um. Cool. Let's get back to it. Yeah. Uh, so I think. Uh. Do I have everything set up on this computer? Let's. Because I I think I set this all up on my own computer, but I don't know if I set it up on here. So install Swift. Yeah, this is what I wanted. Okay, so let's. All right, so let's keep that on the side there and I will zoom in on here. Let's clear this. Boom, boom, boom. Clear. Uh, let's go down. All right, what do I have in here? Okay, yeah, no, I didn't. I don't have it. So you know what? We can just. That's all good. Let's do it from scratch. So, and it'd be good to just make sure it's installed anyway. So let's install Swift. I'm pretty sure I have Swift installed because I think it just it just comes with uh, Xcode. Yeah. So Swift is installed. I think I can do dash V. No, what is it? Okay. Uh, I do need the tool chain, so I'm gonna download that. Okay. All right, cool. Okay, did that download? Yes, it did. All right. All right, let's get this installed. Cool, cool. All right, we'll let this install and uh, I'm not sure what everything is in the tool chain. I don't know if this gives us the deb debugger and the language service protocol. I'm not really sure. Uh, let's move that to the trash. Okay, so we did that. We've got the package installer, Development snapshots we don't need. Okay, I think we're good there. So let's go get started. Okay, Swift version, let's go test that. So let's just exit just in case. And cool. And let's go back to OSS and uh, bu -bu 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 Swift uh, dash dash version. Cool. I'm not sure why it's hanging. Okay. Swift comes bundled with the Swift package manager. Okay. Why is this hanging? Hmm. Interesting. Let's see.
I have Xcode installed, so I, I really don't need that. Let's see here. Maybe it's something going wonky in my VS code. I don't know. Let's see here. Let's do Swift. Okay, weird. It is hanging. There we go. Okay. I don't know why it hung for a second. Okay, now it seems fine. Oh, there we go. I don't know. It's like something was stuck in the who knows what. Okay, so we got that done. Okay, let's go back here and let's go okay, get started. Read a Swift tour. Okay, so let's do the command line tutorial. Okay, I'm going to put this on the side. Let me know if that's big enough to read. If not, I can bump it one more like, whoops, let's see here. Yeah, I can bump it one more. That should be 250%. That should be good. Okay, so we've checked that Swift is there. Okay, bootstrapping it. Okay, so let's do make dir uh, my CLI. And let's do, okay, cool. And let's, uh, let's go to my CLI. All right, and let's just copy this here. So we're gonna, it looks like we're gonna do a package in it, which is uh, like a NPM in it, I guess. Uh, the name of the package will be my CLI and it's an executable, it looks like. Cool. All right. Okay, and I'm gonna open this up in VS Code now. So this is a, not a trick, but this is a tip I always give. If you wanna reopen in the VS Code you're currently in, you just use dash R. Cool, and so we're in the project now. Let me swing this over here. Let's make it a little bigger and let's close that. Okay, so it's saying it creates a package Swift. So if we look at that, uh, let's, here we go. That's kind of too big. Uh, that should be good. So this looks, not exactly obviously, but this is like equivalent of like a package JSON if you're, uh, coming from Node.js, uh, JS land. All right. Um, and then in there, there's also a source main.swift. So if we look at that classic hello world. And so then from there, it says we can run it. So let's just open up the terminal. Uh, let's do that again. Okay. I don't need to clear. Okay, so let's do Swift run my CLI uh, and that's, there's no file called my CLI, but I guess it just knows from the package Swift that that's the package name. So that's what it should do. Um, okay, there we go. Hello world. Cool. Nice. All right. Uh, yeah, so this is Swift based applications are usually composed from libraries that provide functionality. Uh, there's this project called uh, Figlet. Uh, this gives you kind of like, uh, I think this is, uh, I forget what you call that, but I think it'll do ASCII art, I think. Um, so you can find more interesting libraries on the Swift package index, which is like NPM uh, JS. Oh, what's the NPM uh, website's address? But anyways, so if we open this in new tab, we can see this is the whole marketplace, I guess. So I'll drop that in the chat. Cool. And I'm going to go pop that over on Twitter as well. Do, 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 do. Okay. There. Check that out. Oh, and uh, I'm going to go drop the link for uh, folks over on Twitter. Um, the link for whatchamacallit. Uh, not what you might call it. Uh, the link for DigitalOcean. So let's just grab that. Cool. I'll pop that over there. Uh, yeah. And for folks on Twitter, DigitalOcean has this event going on virtual conference, deploy 24, July 9th. Check that out. Cool, cool, cool. Anyways, I'm not going to go into like the uh, package index here right now. I just want to go through the tutorial still. So let's uh, close the terminal again. And so we need to extend our package Swift file. So 
let's go back to package swift and i'm gonna copy this whole sale but like let's let me open this a bit more and i'm gonna zoom this down one there we go that should be okay if for some reason uh people are having trouble reading the my my code in vs code let me know all right so they it's not a json file this is like swift code and it uh so basically looks like you know this is this is our definition of to create a package you call that function uh you give it a name for whatever your package is going to be and then you have this array of dependency it looks like i'm not sure why it's dot package there's probably a reason for that i don't know if i don't know if later on that's so like it's package dot package or something I'm, I'm not really sure about that syntax to be honest uh but anyways it's saying okay this is the url and we want the main branch uh, and this is interesting because it's url based as opposed to i don't know if like that's how their whole thing is set up in terms of their swift index but um that's interesting and then we have targets here so compared to what we currently have here so we just have this thing executable target because it's gonna because it just runs the CLI and it has the name over here. Same thing except the target has some dependencies. One is called Figlet, and it looks like it just it knows what repo it is from the package up here, I guess. And then the path is sources. Uh, that maybe means just the, uh, oh yeah, it's just the folder here, I guess. Okay, so I guess that makes sense. So I'm gonna copy the whole thing here. I'm gonna leave the comment at the top because we have a newer version. Uh, okay, and let's save that. Okay, let's clear this and let's run it again. And Let's see what happens. Hello world still. Okay. Uh, download. Okay. Uh, I need to do swift build. It says instead, uh, just to download the dependencies. Okay, sure. Okay. And then it looks like we're going to change the, the main file. Okay. So it says. Uh, main.swift, uh, call it my CLI. So let's, I'm just going to rename it. So my CLI.swift and then, okay. So let's look at the differences here. So right now we're just saying print hello world because it was a main.swift and it looks like, uh, if we, if we put in this code here now, save that let's run this let's see what we get okay uh let me make it bigger so it says hello swift with like ascii art uh so that's pretty cool but let's look at this um so uh cannot be used in a module that contains top level code okay i uh, i think that might be something else let me save it there's, so I mentioned, I was reading about this. So there's this uh, language service protocol uh, server. Uh, I don't know if you've ever done TypeScript. Sometimes you have to restart the TypeScript server. Uh, I've done this tons of times with VS Code. Swift has an equivalent, so a language service, which is great. That means you can use it in, like if people implement your language service in their editor, like it's, it's a way to kind of have it in many editors. Like I wouldn't be surprised if JetBrains will have a Swift editor at some point, maybe. So I'm going to restart this and it looks like it cleared it now. So I don't know if that's because I renamed main.swift maybe, who knows? So, so it's no longer a main file, but I like before, so we have this static funk main and there's structs and it's called figlet tool. Okay. So there's a few things going on here. So we're importing the package. I think, because it's not called main.swift, I'm guessing adding this decorator, I don't know if they call them decorators in um, in Swift, but this at main 
probably indicates that this is the main function. And we could find out actually, like can go off script here. Uh, let's do this. And let's see. I have a feeling it's going to give an error. Okay, undefined symbols. Okay, yeah. So it looks like that's what indicates that this is the main entry point. So like if we put that back and run it, boom. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, let's put this back here. All right, and let's close this. Okay, and then we have a struct here. Now, um, let's go look at structs because uh, struct versus class in Swift. Uh, maybe not that structures and classes. Let's go to the actual docs. Okay, so let's read this here and I'm going to drop that in the chat and I'll go pop that over on the Twitters as well. Cool. Um, oh yeah. And for folks on Twitter, uh, I'll drop what we're working on. Cool. All right there. And what was I about to do? Okay. Yeah. Let's go back to here. So let's, uh, can we close this a bit? Oh, it's all or nothing. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Cool. Um, okay. Structures and classes are general purpose. I mean, so classes, uh, I'm assuming everybody knows what classes are, but it's for object oriented programming. It's usually when you have something that needs to be stateful. Um, and so it's saying here, these are model custom types that encapsulate data. So the both general purpose, uh, flexible constructs. Okay. I'm just skimming through here. I just want to, yeah, this is what I want to get to. So they have many things in common so they can, define properties, have methods, define subscripts to provide access to their values using subscript syntax. That I don't know what that is, unless they mean like setters and getters. You can define an initializer to set up their initial state. So like in a class, it'd be a constructor uh, in a structure, I'm not sure, or struct. Um, they can both be extended to expand their functionality beyond a default implementation. Okay. Uh, and they both conform to protocols to provide standard functionality of certain kind. Okay. Classes have the following that structures don't have. So classes have inheritance, which that I knew, but, uh, so I guess you can't inherit in a struct. Um, Typecasting enables you to check and interpret the type of a class instance at runtime. Okay, so like if you're coming from JavaScript land, there's this instance of you can use to check like that. So probably similar thing, uh, but I guess for a struct, you just can't do that. Um, classes also have a deinitializer. So that could be like, uh, I haven't seen this done in JavaScript, like a deinitializer, but if you've ever, I did like C sharp and like there's the, uh, dispose i disposable interface so like whenever you want to free memory resources like a database connection or whatever you would call a dot dispose uh, so i'm guessing that's similar and then reference counting allows one more than one reference to a class instance i'm guessing that means you can have multiple variables pointing to a class instance i'm guessing um okay cool um the additional capabilities that support classes come at the cost of increased complexity. It's a general guideline for structures because they're easier to reason about and use classes when they're appropriate or necessary. Translation, it depends. Um, in practice, this means most of the custom types you define will be structures and enumerations. Okay, so this is what I probably should have gone to. Choosing between structures and classes. Okay, uh, maybe I won't deep dive into this right now. I'll, I'll read into it, but i um, gonna check that out. I'll just drop that over on the Twitters as well. Uh, but I'll try and skim here real quick. Um, 
use classes when you need to control identity use okay uh i don't care about objective c at the moment but if you do you definitely need to use excuse me classes uh okay it's saying use structures by default so i'm gonna do that until i hit a point where i'm like i can't do what i want to do and then i'll use a struct uh, a class okay so that said think of this i guess is a class like it's a struct so um basically uh we're saying this struct figlet tool has a static uh function or like static method i should say and it's called main and you run figlet dot say hello all right so there's at main here i'm wondering i'm assuming this won't work if i say like yo uh oh okay i wonder if i do this no okay so this just has to be main, I guess. And then basically we're calling this uh, figlet package is uh, say function. And then that's going to say hello Swift in the chonky characters. Okay, cool, cool. That makes sense. Uh, let's go back home. All right, uh, where was I? Okay. Let's put these side by side again. Let's clear the terminal. Okay, so we got that going. We got our chonky ASCII text. Okay, that's what that, yeah, that's where we were. Then we got the hello Swift. So now we can do argument parsing. So this is, uh, I know this is better in Node now, but you said you use stuff like yargs and stuff. So uh, looks like we're gonna add another package here. So argument parser. So let's just copy this. And in this particular case, it looks like we're grabbing a tagged release 1.0 instead of main. Um, okay, so let's go to package and let's add that other one there. Let's save that and let's see what else do we need. And I gotta add argument parser down here. I could copy the whole thing, but uh, let's come here. Cool. Oh. Okay. Uh, that's good there. Okay. That's all we need in the package Swift. I'm going to run Swift build just so it pulls down the dependency like they said before. Okay. And now let's tweak this up a bit. So let's come here. So I'm not going to copy the whole thing because I, I don't, maybe it'll sink in better if I just like put in what I need. Okay. So we've got this figlet tool, parsable command. I uh, you know what? I'm just going to copy it. Been hypocritical, but all right. So we got our app main again. We have, interestingly, now there. Uh, if I'm looking at this, there's no, there's a main still, but we do run. So uh, again, still new to this, so I'm not sure, but like, I think if you have a at main attribute and in your struct, you can either have public run, func run or static void main, maybe. Is it static void? I can't remember. I'm, I'm mixing up with C sharp. Um, okay. So let's just got that there okay so these are parsable commands and so let's we can read more about the argument parser but like let's let's look at this code i think it it makes sense what it is so it's this parsable command is a protocol i read about protocols briefly i i think think of a protocol as like an interface in typescript or like c sharp uh i don't think it's any different. I'm not sure why they called it protocol. Maybe maybe there is some differences, um, but basically this is saying uh, this needs to use the uh, parsable command. And if we go to that, um, okay, I can't go to definition, but um, oh, it says no definitions found. But basically we've got some more annotations here. So it says at option and then help specify the input public var input string 
and then uh, Figlet says self dot input. So I think what's going on here is we're, we need to pass an argument. So like this, I can look down here, but okay, uh, actually it has it right here. So if we do this and run this, let me make this bigger. Okay, so it's gonna say hello world. And so it looks like uh, if we come here, so we're running our program, my CLI again, and now we have an argument here, dash dash input. And if we look here, there's a variable called input. So I'm pretty sure at option means it's an argument that uh, it's telling the program that this is the argument that they put over here. And we could test that. Like if we clear this, whoops, and let's do, I don't know, name. Uh, and we'll say Nick, I'll put in, I think it has to be in a string. Okay, and then let's do this uh, name. And thank you, IntelliSense and name. And if I put the other one, which is the input. Okay, so let's run this and if I, or let's, let's do this first. Swift run uh, input, hello world. My guess is it's not gonna, okay. Uh, what's it saying here? Does not conform to protocol parsable arguments. Okay, so maybe everything has to have an at option. So let's do this. Um, okay, let's run this again. Missing expected argument name. Okay, oh, okay, I see what's happening. So I ha because I've specified two now, I have to put both. So if I do this, uh, ba -ba -ba, and it's probably gonna output Nick because that's all I put in. Okay, so it looks like for parsable arguments, we c if you have uh, a public var, you can already see it's complaining about it. Um, I wonder if this was private, I think it would be okay. No? Okay, so it looks like any variables you define in the struct, if it implements the parsable command protocol, has to have an at option. So, and so I put my name there. So then I can do something like, um, uh, hello, uh, and then my name. And I looked this up the other day. I believe this is the syntax for like, kind of like template strings or this, I think it was. Uh, let's try this. There's no, okay, let's run this when there's no input, see if it complains. Okay, yeah, unknown option. Okay, so that's good. It's doing some validation, which is cool. Let's run this. Okay, and let's see what did it write. Hello, self name. That's not what we want. I think it's backslash. Let's try this again. Okay, that's what it was. Okay, so I find this syntax odd, but you know, whatever it's syntax, right? You just get used to it. Okay, so I think that's pretty good there. What time did I start streaming? Oh yeah, like 45 minutes ago, uh, 50 minutes ago. All right, uh, let's see here. Cool, all right. Yeah, I think this one, let's see. Okay, that was that, is that the end of that one? Okay. So let's go to the next tutorial. Let's do a library. All right, and Swift version, we did all that, we did all that, okay. So library with tests, okay, we got tests coming up. All right, nice. Let's push this over here, or you know what, I'll put it like that. 
Okay, so let's create a new project like they're saying. So let's just copy this whole thing. Okay, and then let's do code uh, dash R. Okay, so we're back to our new project. And we're going to see there's a few things here. So we, the stuff we saw before, sources, uh, file, looks like we've got some tests now. Uh, the Swift file is on, it seems to be just naming convention. If your package is called like my library, then there's a sources folder, my library. And in there it has to be my library dot Swift, I guess. And then the tests, I don't know if they have to be named that way as well, or maybe it's just the way the scaffolding works. Okay. Let's go down here. Okay, so let's go look at the package Swift. This one's a little bigger. So, okay, so this time it's a library instead of an executable. And it's the targets, the basic building blocks of a package, defining a module or test suite. So target my library and test target um, my library tests, okay? That seems pretty straightforward. Um, so, okay, so we can run Swift test. So this, this is nice that uh, it's got built-in testing. I know Node has this now, they didn't before, but so let's just run this and let's see what it did. All right, so it ran all these tests and they all passed, okay. So now let's write a small library. Replace the content of library Swift with the following code. Okay. We'll do uh, my library Swift. Okay. Let's leave that. Okay. So looking at this, this looks like a module for validating emails. Let's save that. All right, now let's add a unit test. So let's go into test. Okay, and final class, my library test, func test example. All right, let's just put this whole thing in and then let's read through it. Uh, at testable my library. At, okay, that's all good. Okay, so first thing I see is email is missing. Why is that? Uh, let's see here. Swift test. Uh, interesting. Maybe it, why does it say it couldn't find it? Okay, you know, I have a feeling this is the language server. So let's see here. If I run restart LSP server, okay it finds it okay yeah so i don't know if that's a bug in in like using swift in vs code but uh again the just restarting the language service uh, fixes that okay cool so we got our test passing and so like yeah so we said um let john.appleseed.apple.com we're gonna try that email this is an interesting syntax try and then we get an email and if it doesn't work we throw try email invalid interesting so let's try this email description john appleseed excerpt okay we're saying it should equal it so uh let's try and put an invalid email so let's do Applecom, I'm assuming it's gonna fail. Yeah, so one test failed. Uh, where is it here? Invalid email error, uh, johnappleseed.com. So cool, that works. And then, oh, okay, I see what happened. Okay, so here, so this is saying try and it sets it if it exists i guess if it fails it it just throws an error i guess but um 
but over here, so we're just asserting that the email uh, dot description ends up being john.appleseed at apple.com. And this other one is a test to just, uh, it was doing what, well, not doing what I was doing, but uh, let me put it back here. Basically, this is an invalid email. Uh, so that's why we're testing, does it throw? So like if I put invalid at invalid.com and run the test now, I'm expecting this to fail. There should be one failure. Yeah, exactly. One failure uh, did not throw an error. So nice setup to test the happy path and errors. So that's cool. All right. Awesome. Well, listen, I think I'm going to head out, but uh, just a little deep dive in. Yeah. Yeah, did not throw error. Well, you can do stuff like you can do stuff like this in uh, like in JavaScript land with testing frameworks. You can say like expect to throw and like basically you have a function that wraps the thing that's going to give the error and then the it asserts that it actually threw the error. Uh, so there's, it's similar. Um, I'm not sure what XCT uh, means. Uh, I'm not sure what that. Oh, maybe Xcode, Xcode something is Xcode test assert. Maybe I don't know what XCT is. Just a guess. Anyways, I'm gonna head out. But uh, thanks for hanging, folks, and uh, thanks again, Appright, for the uh, keyboard, and thank you, Fifine or Fifine for the microphone. I'm gonna be uh, testing it out, and again, uh, feel free to check out uh, Digital Oceans event going on. It's for uh, devs, uh, startups and founders, and it's called deploy 24. It's on July 9th. And thanks again for sponsoring DigitalOcean. Take care, everybody.